Well, hello, and welcome back to season three of Wine Down Wednesday with my lady of the week. Y'all don't know nothing about this song. This is Eric Benet. I know y'all see it. Don't pretend like y'all don't see it. Yes, she has new hair. <laughs> Long hair, don't care. Yes, this is my summertime vacation look, honey. What y'all think? So, okay, so first, let me give a shout out to the woman responsible for my new do, the queen of crochet underscore LA. Yes, you hooked your girl up. Y'all know I'm loving this. Look, I haven't had long hair in uh, 20 plus years, so this is indeed a change for me, but I'm like, actually feeling it right now. All right, we got some people coming in the wine room. Let's see who we have here. A uh, C underscore FX has joined us. Hi, Charles. Uh, we have Randy Bella uh, Associates has joined us. Hi, Randy. Hey, lady. Let's see, my mom is here. Hi, mommy. Uh, let's see. You all go follow my mom at imani.richardson.7 92 go show her some love hey cheryl at beautiful monarch she has joined us hey lady oh my gosh quite a few come in here miss handy is here hey lady hey carl 5026 carl what you think about the new hair she needs a name <laughs> all right guys so listen this evening's uh wind down wednesday is all about femininity Yes, the F word. <laughs> um, if you're like me, uh, many of us struggle with going between our masculine energy and feminine energy, especially those of us that are quote unquote boss ladies. So my lady of the week this week is going to tell us how to do just that, how to go between those masculine spaces while not forgetting how to be feminine. So if you guys will give me a few seconds, I'll be able to bring her into the wine room. But hold on, I have to give a shout out to my makeup artist. Hey Alex, at M-U-A Alex, and that's with two X's. So you guys, please go show him some love. And let's see who else we have coming into the wine room. I have, uh, thanks Phyllis. She said I look gorgeous. Thank you Phyllis, you, got, you like the hair? Uh, hey, Miss T loves her kids. I'm going to miss you. She's moving back to Texas. Hey, baby girl, 79. Hey, lady. Uh, thanks, guys. You guys are really showing me some love over this hair. You know, I got to get used to it. But look, look how cute this is. Look, y'all. Both sides are short. The back is super cute. And it's really, really, really light. And I was a little afraid at first because my hair is really thin. So I thought that it would weigh down my hair, but it doesn't. It's very, very light. All right, guys. So I'm going to see if my lady of the week is coming on. Um, hey, level up dot cat. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Nessie 1028. Thank you, girl. I'm loving to hear myself too. She created a monster, y'all. Again, go follow Queen of crochet underscore LA and look at all the cute styles that she has over there. Oh, and I can't forget the girl who waves my hair and does my hair on a regular, Miss Lanny B, the stylist. She has joined it as well. So thank you guys for hooking me up today, Lanny B, the stylist. You did a beautiful job. Thank you. All right, let's see. I'm gonna wave at you, wave at you, wave at you, wave at you. Oh my God, so many of you are coming into the wine room. I'm just waiting for my lady of the week. All right, but while we wait for my lady of the week, I'm gonna guys give you guys a little um, bit, tell you guys a little bit about her. Actually, she's here, okay. Uh, my lady of the week this week is Miss Tracy Johnson Warren, guys. Um, this woman is incredible. She has oh, an over 30 year of being an entrepreneur. Um, here in Los Angeles, but I don't want to give it all away. So I'm going to bring her on into the wine room so you guys can meet her for yourselves. Give me one second. As we guys, don't forget, it is Wine Down Wednesday. Clink, 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 clink. Have a sip. Ah, there you go. Hi, Tracy. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay, good, good, just good, good, good. fine. Hi. 
How are you? I'm good. Look, I'm all excited. I get excited for <laughs> everybody, but I'm super, super excited for this one. And I just want to say thank you so much for doing this live with me this evening. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited about being here as well. Okay, okay. Well, before we get started, we always have to do a little toast for a great conversation. My, my cucumber water. <laughs> cucumber water. Hey, that's fine too. All right, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tracy. So before we get started, can you please tell everyone who you are and where you're from? My name is Tracy Johnson, and I am from Oakland, California. Woo woo, Oaktown in the house. Woo woo, in the house. Right. 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 Okay. So, Tracy, you have to allow me to uh, give you your flowers before we get started, okay? So I just okay. want to okay. gush on you for a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys, as I miss, mentioned, Miss Tracy Johnson is uh, the celebrity stylist, okay? They are stylists, but then they are the celebrity oh, stylist. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so back in the late 90s, she had the salon. Not a salon. She had the salon, which was located at 7250 Melrose Avenue. And if any of you know anything about Los Angeles, you know that is prime real estate here. Anybody who was anybody and is still anybody walking <laughs> through those doors. Uh, yeah. Tracy is responsible for some of the most iconic short haircuts. I'm talking Nia Long. I'm talking Simone Smith. I'm talking Kelly Williams. And the list goes on. Jada Pinkett. And if she didn't do their hair, she was copy. So I just want to <laughs> give you your flowers and also say to you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to manage the salon. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm even my first manager. Yes. <laughs> So that was I just want to give you a good round of applause and give you all your flowers as we get thank into this you. conversation. So thank you so much. This is awesome. really nice. Thank you so much. And I love your hair, by the way. Thank girl. Look, they done gave me some hair. I don't know what to do something like that. I thought about doing something like that last year, but I but I just don't know. I just whenever I try to do something like that, my hair, I just I'm I'm just so used to having short hair that I just don't even like I can't get used to it, you know. Yeah, it, it, it does it. take some getting used to, but that's why I left the you know the back and the side mm -hmm. out just mm -hmm. so I could have the juxtaposition of the long and the short. So, yes. All right, everybody. Yes. So, so tonight's cute. live is all about femininity. Oh, uh, we have somebody else joining us too. Who else is there? <laughs> is that? Is that your baby? Yeah, she has to be somewhere near me, touching me some kind of way. So, Tracy, hold her up because I can't see her. I just see her little bows. We got to see her cute time. We got to give her some uh, on air time as well. <laughs> okay, here she is. Oh, look at her. Hi, baby girl. Hey, hello, people. Hi, 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 hi. Oh, oh, she's so sweet. Okay, this is the sweetest dog, and I'm not really a dog person, but let me tell you, she will make you rub and love on her, which oh, is the funniest thing. So, hi, she Miss Pearl. Miss she Pearl. will. <laughs> she's used to a lot of love. Oh, all right, girl. So, <laughs> let's go on and get into this okay. conversation. So, okay. okay. <laughs> so, one of the many things that I've always admired about you is your ability to be a feminine woman, yet you have no problems rolling up your sleeves and getting your hands dirty. How do you uh, have display your feminine strength and business while still maintaining your femininity, Tracy? Well, you know, I I, um, I think about the Proverbs 31 woman, if you're familiar with her in the Bible, and she was a woman who she had businesses, she worked, she did, she, she, she was um, a woman who ran her household, you know, she went out, she got up early, she worked, she took care of her home, she did it all. And she was praised by her husband and her children because she, of her femininity, because she still was in her role of feminine woman at the same time as she did everything else. So I kind of like try to model that pre, that um, that character in the Bible. Um, I, I don't know how to be anything else but, you know, so it's not really something that I do. It's something, it's, it's who I am. You know what I mean? So... I don't really know how to like 
compartmentalize that. You know, how do you be a boss and then be feminine over here? It's just who I am. You know what I mean? So I don't really know how to like separate it. Or, you know, it's just how I how I move through life. I guess you could say. No, to you, I love what you mentioned about Proverbs thirty one. That is the ultimate character of what yes. the enemy is, what a boss mm -hmm. is, all mm -hmm. those things combined right. together. Right. So, okay, so, but women are genuinely uh, receive backlash for carrying right. ourselves with authority or confidence, and then we're socially marginalized or excluded from being in charge. What has been your experience with that? Um, well, you know, I, I, can't, I can't say that I can speak on being excluded because of the fact that I've made my own way, you know. Um, so I'm not in corporate America or something like that where I have to compete with men in any kind of way. Um, you know, I've started my own business and I've, you know, worked, I've been an entrepreneur. So because of that, I could kind of create my environments and stuff like that. Do you see Did you feel you, that? Huh? Did you feel that earthquake? I didn't feel an earthquake, but I, I was, you felt an earthquake? Girl, yes. <laughs> no, I didn't. Wow. I didn't feel an earthquake. But I did, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting some feedback, though. I don't know if that's, um, you know. I, I can hear you just fine. Okay. okay. I can just, okay, so you really haven't had to deal with that because you basically made your own way as far as being yes. uh, an entrepreneur. But what I yes. do know is that when men in those roles and they display, um, that I won't say aggressiveness, you know, that th they have. When women do that, there seems to be some backlash with that. So have you had any of those experiences, even in your industry where you've had to maybe like show that uh, side of you? Well, I will say this, um, because of the climate and how women interact with each other, mm -hmm. especially us, black women. Yes. Um, you know, there is some type of um, adjustment that I have to make that my counter my male counterparts don't have to to make. Okay. Um, just an example, growing up, you know, working when I first worked in the salon, it was with all men. I was the only female in a salon. And this was in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And the guys were like able to like be unprofessional and keep the people in there all day and night and you know, run to the store and do all kinds of stuff. And the women would just be sitting there and not even complaining. But the standard for me was, I need to get in and out, you know. I'm, you know, I, I got somewhere to go. Or, but that was just, I had to be more professional than them. So it's kind of like when we talk about black and white, we talk about how we have to rise to the occasion. We have to be that much better or do that much more and, and it's kind of the same thing when it comes to you know dealing with male and female in this industry you know when you're a woman you have to you have to be professional you can't afford not to be professional because you're dealing with other women so you kind of have to you have that dynamic of how black women treat each other and then you have to deal with the whole professional thing so Sometimes it can get tricky, you know. So me being in this business, I had to learn how to deal with black women or deal with women, period, in a way that they felt comfortable coming to me and knew that, that they were going to have um, a an, an, uh, professional experience because that's what was required because I'm a female. You know what I mean? Right. So did you find that it was easier for them to take criticism from men than it was to take criticism from you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're talking about the co-workers or workers or Just in people. general, the co-workers. Oh, absolutely. Even, even your, you know, where maybe where you got to before you owned your salon and you may have some staff or other people that were quote unquote under you, was it easier for them to receive that criticism from a man? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That, and that's why, what I why do you think that is? Well, first of all, you don't have that dynamic like I was speaking of earlier. You don't have that when it comes to men. You know, women always think, you know, catty or some woman is jealous of you or it's always that kind of thing in the background. You know, um, with men, they don't people don't think about that kind of stuff. They just, you know, they just think, OK, he's an authority and that's it. So when you're a woman in authority, you have to think about all those things that men do not have to think about. You know what I mean? 
So it's that dynamic mixed in with the whole thing. So you kind of have to be aware of all of them at the same time. And it's not fair because when you're a woman in business, I mean, you're just a woman in business. This is business. This is not personal. Right. But it's always personal when it's two women. You know always. what I mean? Yeah. It's always personal. So there you have it. <laughs> yes, no. And, and to your point, I used to manage a express clothing store. That's really where our relationship was fostered. And that's right. I just I remember, remember that. when I would tell them to do something, oh my God, you would have thought I asked them to jump off the roof. You know, exactly. When it, when it came from a guy or something, it was like, oh, no problem, no problem. But when mm -hmm. it came from me, it was like, oh, she's being aggressive or she's too hard on her or so whatever. But a man all day long, he can, you know, walk with his chest out bark out those commands and nobody has anything to say about it so absolutely absolutely i, I was just when you were saying that i was thinking about one of my favorite movies the devil wears prada mm. and you know how she was i mean she was she was tough man she was tough but if she was a man no one would have said anything about that mm -hmm. they you know she was just known as like this villain because she was a female behaving that way right right yeah. Okay. So as we talk about femininity, because I, I, I strongly feel that there are a lot of women who don't rest in their femininity or don't know how to. Right. So when you think of femininity, what comes to mind to you? Well, when I think of fem see, I think that we have femininity. A lot of times people think of femininity as weakness, mm -hmm. you know, or meekness, you know, or you have to be, um, you know, docile and quiet and, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think of it like that. To me, femininity is powerful. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful, mm -hmm. you know. Tracy, um, say that again, please. It's very powerful. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. People yes. are drawn to femininity, you know, and they're not drawn to it because it's weak and meek and docile. They're not drawn to it because of that. Femininity is powerful. Mm. Um, and it's it's something that um, that we all should, you know, women, you know, we're born with it, you know what I mean? And if we don't utilize it, if we don't, we don't, we, we don't move through life. A lot of us don't move through life with it because we were told that we need to come, we need to be strong, and we need to act a certain way. And, you know, because people won't take us seriously if we're not strong, if we're not. But we think that means vocal and, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know what I You know what I mean? Absolutely. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, mean that. Femininity does not, I mean, um, being strong does not mean, you know, that you're, that you speak quiet or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, I feel like for me, um, I know that I have a balance of femininity and, and strength. I have a balance of that. Right. And so, um, and, and to move through life, I think there was a time in my life earlier on where I thought that it, you know, being strong meant that you had to, you know, speak with authority or, you know, or be kind of harsh or, you know, for people to take you seriously. But it's just about you being about your business. Right. You know, and, and I think that's what makes people take you seriously. It doesn't have to be, oh, I have to speak to you in a certain manner in order for you to respect me. Right. In fact, you lose respect when you speak to people in a certain way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, I think that that it's, it's kind of sad that we've got that tag on us as far as African-American women, how we've got that tag that, you know, we're so strong. And which means vocal, which means, you know, heart, which means, you know, we can't be, um, we don't, we're not sensitive, you know, all those things. We have that, um, that label, that tag, mm -hmm. which is not, which is not true. You know, we have had to be strong, but we don't want to be men. Right. <laughs> we're not trying to be men. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. um, anyway, I hope I answered that question. No, absolutely. You, you and I, we were having a conversation the other day just about that whole strong black woman narrative. And I was saying to you, no other race of people walks around saying, I'm a strong white woman. I'm a strong exactly. Asian woman. 
you know, and exactly. that word has really done us a disservice. Because when we go to like the hospital and we are seeking medical attention, they're thinking, you know, she's faking because she's a strong black woman. You exactly. Know? And so we really have to be careful with the words that we use to describe ourselves. And to your point, the things that become a label on us. Yes. Um, has there ever been a time where you uh, found that you were having trouble going between being the boss at work and maybe in some of your personal relationships, turning on that femininity is, or letting that go and then turning on that femininity? Um, not really, not really. Um, I never got that twisted. Like, okay, I'm the boss at work. I never even feel, to be honest with you, to be completely transparent with me, I never felt like, the boss at work you know what i mean i never felt like that i actually feel uncomfortable with that whole um tag or title you yes. know the boss mm -hmm. and so i don't want to be the boss <laughs> you know what right. i mean right i definitely don't want to be the boss in my relationship you know that that's what i don't want <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to run nobody i'm not trying to emasculate or you know demean my man I'm, I'm not trying to do that so um i don't think that i that that's been an issue for me as far as you know that now i'm sure in my younger years you know i might have been a slick mouth and stuff but that didn't, that didn't have nothing to do with being a boss <laughs> right that's that oakland baby like hold on <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know Right. But um, yeah, I've grown up. I've matured since then, you know. But um, no, I, I I can't say that I struggled with that. But I know women that do struggle with it, and I know yeah. men that talk about that and say that you know that a lot of women don't know how to turn that energy off when they get into um, relationships. You know, they they want to still have that that masculine energy and feminine spaces. And they just Absolutely. don't know how to do that. And so even even me creating the brand, Hey Lady, and mm -hmm. talking about being a lady, for some reason, um, it's almost like a bad thing now to say you're a lady. Can you talk about what does a lady mean to you? When you hear that word, what does that invoke in you? Well, let me let me just say this. You know, I've heard this saying that says that we're now the, the men that we've always wanted. Ooh, wait, Tracy. Lord Jesus. Mm. <laughs> oh, God, girl. Oh, Lord. Say it again. Black women, and there, we're talking about black women, that we are now the men that we've always wanted. We have the cars. We have the house. We have the career. We have the businesses. We have all of that. So now we're the men mm. that we've always wanted. So, you know, we used to, you know, we used to, aspire to meet that kind of man you know the man who has the home and the cars and the houses and stuff. so now we get to a place where we're feeling like okay so what do we need you for what what is it that we need you for which is which is uh crazy right um it really is crazy because um what we really needed you for it wasn't anything financial in the first place you know right <laughs> it, it really wasn't right but the problem is, this is the problem. The problem is when we take our position mm. and, we, and we believe that because we're in the position that we're in, then we're in control. And that we can um, tell you, well, this is my house, this is my money, this is my this, so I don't really need you to tell me anything. When we have that attitude, then that's the detriment of your relationship, you know. Absolutely. Then there's your problem. If you have that attitude, then you have a problem. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's, it's obvious who if you're coming in with this, if you have your stuff together, it's uh, that's obvious. Right. But you don't have to ever utilize that. You don't even have to ever say that. Yeah, you because don't have to recognize it. Right. You do not. And if you once you say that, that's like the beginning of the end. Once you open your mouth to say, look, this is my money. Look, this is my house. This is my car. You know, I don't need you 
You know what I mean? A man needs to be needed. He really does need to be needed. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the problem, though. Here's the problem. Sometimes we get with the wrong man. Right? No, because that's a fact. That's a fact. Sometimes we get with the wrong man, and sometimes it doesn't matter how much you, you know, don't talk about what you're, what you have of your assets or whatever. He'll still be intimidated by you as a person. You know what I mean? It won't even matter. So you got to be careful about who you choose to be to link up with in the first place. Because that's someone who, who understands who he is, where he is, is happy about where he is. Confident in, in in his part and what he has to offer, his value and his worth and all that. You have to be confident in that, and you have to be confident in who you are and you know what your value is. And you know what your worth is, and that's the only way you guys are going to be able to coexist, especially in this climate when Black women are so much more educated than anyone, first of all, right. unless you are there. Than any, any group in America, you're right. Mm -hmm. Unless you are there. And then we have homes and cars and air and businesses, you know, Fortune 500 businesses. We have all that stuff. But how do you coexist with the average black man? Right. Now, that's the question. How do we do that? How do we coexist? How do we be bosses and then still have your man and the man in your life feel like he's needed and wanted by you. Right. How do we do that? And that's where femininity, that's where femininity comes from. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes in. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I, I think of something that, um, you know, that I've struggled with because I think when you get used to doing things on your own and by yourself, and that somebody, that male comes into your space or you enter into their space, there is definitely a, a tightrope walk that you do and trying to balance when you said because the men he needs to feel needed right so something as simple as i remember i was making some food or whatever and i asked a friend of mine could he open the spaghetti jar right. you know and while i could open the jar up of you course. know it was that whole kind of you know what let me here you go you know and it's funny because i could see his face like light up like oh sure give me that i'll open that up for you you know exactly. and he felt like a pride you know exactly. been doing that so I just think we need to be more cognizant Absolutely. Right, of the yes. things that we say. We have Absolutely. to be cognizant of our tone because sometimes Absolutely. it's not what you say, it's, it's how you true. say it. Absolutely. And you know what, Tanya, and that's such a good um, analogy because when you are single and when you are used to doing everything, you know, fixing stuff in your house and you know, whatever, putting up pictures and hanging curtains and all this kind of stuff that you are used to doing. And then you meet a man and you have to be cognizant, just like you said, of the little things. You know, yes, I can open up the jar. Right. Because I used to, I'll get a, a knife or whatever and, and top the top. You know what I mean? I'll do that. Look, 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 hit the bottom of that jar. <laughs> You can do that. Right. But but should you? Right. You know, should you? Um, do you, you don't have to anymore. So we as women, I think that we really have to re remind ourselves, you know, who we are. And we have to get in touch with our, femi our femininity. We really, really do. We have to get in touch with that. And we can't lay it down. It has to be a part of who we are. And it's how we life you know and it's not that we have to practice yes. you know because it doesn't come natural it doesn't come easy especially when you when you were raised by a single mother you didn't that have a part, Tracy. that wife. part yes if you were raised by a single mother you didn't have a father in your home you know you 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 what or if you did have a father in your home and he wasn't you know when he was out working his mother was still at home doing everything you know what i mean right. so the thing is you have to remind yourself that you are a lady you know, you have to remind yourself that you're a lady. And you have to think about, if you even have to just pay attention to, you just need to start paying attention to lady things. Like, what do ladies do? How do ladies And you have to incorporate that into your life. You just do. You know, you don't want to act like a man. You don't. We are not, we 
your lady. Right. And and that's in, in the um the, uh, the complaint that a lot of black men have because they it may not even be that your tone is off. It may not be that you're talking down to him. But he's just trying to figure out where he can go into your life. Mm -hmm. You know, where how can he help you? How can he be of assist, assistance to you in your life? Mm -hmm. How can he you know what I mean? Absolutely. And you have to figure that out as well. He can't just, you know, you're not leave, you can't leave that all up to him to figure out how to get into your life. You got to figure it out too. You have to be like, okay, here we go. You know, I need you for this, or I need you for that, or you don't even have to say it. You know, just, you know, hand them the jar to open right. it. <laughs> Something so simple. Look, Something so Let simple. Let him open the car door. You know, right. Let him open the car door. Right. Right. You know, so. And that's something we have to learn. That's not something that comes naturally. Unless you have a daddy that did that for you every day, it's not natural. Yeah. But yeah. even to your point, sometimes fathers, because I, I, I think about my bonus dad, and even the message from him, a lot of it was get your own, get your education, get your, don't let no man, you know what I mean? So uh, sometimes it's coming from fathers as well. It is. It is. Well, because they know, you know, a lot of times how men think and how men are. So they don't really have a lot of hope in this one in the Mr. Right anyway. Right. So they're saying, you know, you don't have, there's not a lot of hope out here. So go get your stuff. Go get your, go get your education. Go get your career. Which is fine, okay? Get your career. Get your education. But learn how to be a leader. Yes. Still. You know what I mean? Still Absolutely. be a leader. Still be that. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's something that that part is the part that we're not really taught. Now, we're taught to go out and do this and go, you know, but I think that sometimes, sometimes that you might have come from, you know, a, a, a line of women who were jaded. Right. Or you have fathers who was probably Rolling Stones and they know so they know what they're capable of. Right. Yeah, so they, right. so they know what's happening and they're like, right. okay, so go get your money, you know, get your house, don't be worried about no man and all that stuff, you know. And so uh, that is what, you know, ingrained us. Mm -hmm. And ingrained in our, in, our, in, in our DNA, basically. Yes, for sure. And so... We um we work like that, and, and but we have to unlearn some things. Deprogramming. Whoa, yes. Deprogramming. We have to. We yeah. have to. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. And and admittedly, so I mean, I know that those are some things that I've struggled with. You know, yes. and that I even now, like, I have to. I just have to be aware, and I have to have like internal conversations with myself. Like, okay, don't do that. Fall back. Allow him to do anything. Like, it it is a growth. It is a daily. Thing that Absolutely. I walk with, and that, but I am intentional about it. You know That's what I, you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional about it. It doesn't come natural. It doesn't. Right. Not for us. Right. Well, no, and some, especially us. those of us that are running businesses, it's even more Absolutely. like you know. Yeah. It, it it doesn't come natural. So it is something that we have to be intentional about. Mm -hmm. Um. That's like that. We need to study femininity. We got to study it so we'll know how to move and how to do, it. you know, what does it take to make a man in your life feel wanted and feel needed by you, even though you don't really need him for anything financially. Right. And that's the nature of, like, if you can't give it to you financially, then it's really, you know, what's my value? You know what I mean? We need to figure out another value. Absolutely. We got to figure that out together, Absolutely. you know? Mm -hmm. So when you think about lady and femininity, who to you is like the ultimate lady to you in your description? Who would you say? You know, and, you, and you're probably going to say, yeah, because this is probably somebody that everybody thinks about. is Claire Huxtable. Yes. Ooh, I, yes. Just, I just love yes. Claire Huxtable. You know why I loved her so much? Because she never raised her voice. Never. She's very eloquent, very intelligent, a boss. Yes. And she didn't play. Mm -mm. But she was so feminine. Yeah. I just love that about her. Yeah. She was so feminine and she was just, 
she was to me the ultimate. She really was. Yeah, me too, Tracy. She really was. And even, and she even was. Felicia Rashad herself, when I... Of course. You know of what course. I mean? Just, that's, just, Claire that's, Huxtable, that's what we see. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, can, we can study Claire Huxtable. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes, Claire was, she was she was the ultimate. Look, I say she, she was nicety. She was nice. She wanted to nice. get you together, and you didn't even realize that she had got you together. <laughs> that was it. But you know, even in her, even in that, she wasn't. Um, she was still kind. Yes. You know, and I and I have a thing about kindness and niceness. Mm -hmm. They're they're two different things. Okay. You know. Um, when you're a kind person, even when you're angry, you're going to be conscious, conscientious of, of how you speak and how you um, deal with the other person because you, don't, you, you understand that there's going to have to be some residuals afterward. Absolutely. You understand that. Absolutely. Well, when you're nice, you can be nice for a minute, but, you, but when you... When you get mad, that niceness goes out the window. Out the window. Mm -hmm. But a kind person is still going to be, is going to deliver it with some type of love and restraint. Yeah. Sometimes. Now, it might not come out, you know, because, like, when she got mad, she, got, she, she said what she had to say. Oh, for sure. But you can still see the love in it. Even, yeah. even in that, you still can see the love in it. And that's the difference. Yeah. One of my yes. favorite sayings is truth without compassion yes, without is brutality. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So yes. We, we can it's deliver true. the truth, mm -hmm. but if you don't put a little compassion and a little love behind it, it comes off as brutality and it'll never yes. be received the way never. that it's meant it to be received. So Exactly. Exactly. Child, you have said exactly. a word tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I don't want to keep you any much longer. I know that you took some time out of your busy schedule to be here with us this evening. So I just want to say thank you so much. But before I let you go, I've got just a few questions um, okay. to ask. And so sure. my first question is going to be, uh, what is your favorite quote? My favorite quote? Um, hmm. Huh, my favorite quote. Huh. You talk about Proverbs 31, so I know. Well, I love like Proverbs 31. Um, hmm, I can't even think of a favorite quote, but... Hmm. Oh. I always say, grieve and grind. Grieve and grind. Yes, grieve and grind. Um, move through the madness. It's like... It's like I you can't get stuck. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you're going through. You don't get stuck. You deal with it and you keep moving. Whatever it is you're going through, you you grieve and you grind. I don't you grieve and grind at the same time. You don't stop and just you know. And that's just one. I, I there's several that I have, and I, now I it, it escapes me all of the ones that I no I like that though. But, Grieve and grind. That's like my that's that's like my motto, I guess you would say. No, no I like that. that. I, 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 yeah. No, I like that because so many people get stuck. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and life is ever evolving, it's ever changing. You still gotta keep yeah. it moving through you yes. know, your your grieving process. No, I and I you, that. no matter what you you might be, you could be grieving about no a number of things, you know, it's lost jobs or whatever, anything. But um, but you but you don't get stuck there, you know. One of my best friends, she likes to say, "Cry hard, but not long. Cry hard, but not long. Yep, you cry and then you're done and you move on. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't waddle in it. You don't get paralyzed by things. You just you deal with it and you move forward. You keep going, moving the madness, moving through madness. Yeah. Oh, I love that." Yeah. Okay, um, what is the best advice ever given to you? The best advice? Um, the best advice that I've ever given, don't dim my light. Don't dim your light. Don't dim my light. Because mm. I've done that. You know, and I think that's what happens when young with well when you're a boss 
you could easily fall into that. When you're a, a strong woman, um, and I'm, you know, I'm not saying, you know, because we said you just got to understand that black women are only ones. Who I'm a strong woman, strong woman, right? But if when you're a strong woman, um, it it can be easy for you to dim your light because you you because of your experience, right? And you know that people have been intimidated by your success or by who you are or whatever. So because you don't want those issues. If it, sometimes you fall into, I'm going to dim my light. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to tell you about who I am. I'm not going to show you who I really am. You know, I'm going to fall back a little bit so that I won't intimidate you, so that I won't um, run you away or whatever. And someone told me, never dim your light. Never, never dim your light. And it reminds me of, and it reminds me of, um, of a poem. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Miriam Williamson. And she wrote she wrote this poem talking about our deepest fear. Are you familiar with that? I'm not. So she, um, I, I can't really uh, quote the whole thing, but it says this. It says our deepest fear is not that that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. Wow. And we ask ourselves, who am I to be beautiful, smart, talented, and gifted, or whatever? And then you ask yourself, well, who am I not to be? Because when we allow our life to shine, we give others permission to do the same. So basically, that's what it's talking about. And that's something that hit me like a ton of bricks because I remember in my early, you know, I owned clips when I was in my 20s. My yes, time were you like 27? No, I was younger than that, I think. I don't wow. remember. I was in my 20s. And I remember feeling like I'm just too much. Like I'm too much. You know, let me let me dim myself. Let me not let me fit in over here or let me become friends with this person so they won't think that I'm too uppity or let me you know what I'm saying? Like that those were some of the thoughts that went on in my head, you know. Right. And I remember that. I remember consciously dimming my life. I remember that. Mm -hmm. You know, so that I could be liked, so that people wouldn't dislike me because I'm already going to be disliked because of the position that I was in. Right. You know, so how can I make people like me by acting like it's not, it's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Right. By acting like um, I'm not all that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. By dimming my life. Right. And that's what I did. I remember that. I remember doing that. I do. Mm. But I, <laughs> child, nobody got time for that, right? So I, I, I like to say the sun is never threatened by the moon. The moon right. is never threatened by the sun. Right? They both shine. They both shine, right? Yep. And it's that's enough true. for all of us to shine. Absolutely. So baby, Absolutely. get you some shine, honey. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, and I, and I, I have been blessed in the recent years to be surrounded by a lot of women, you know, that, uh, you know, are that that are supportive and, um, you know, just have each other's back. I love that. I, I love love being around women like that. They're strong. That they have their own and they're. You know, and they're they have their own lives and they're doing their own things and ain't that time to be worried about what you do, you know. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. I love that. Right. I love that. Whew. Well, all right, guys. This has been Think Like a Boss, <laughs> Act Like a Lady, and she has spelled it out for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me, Tasha. I, no, really, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. Like I said, I know you are a busy woman, but I do uh, thank you so much for uh, gracing us with your presence this evening and uh, dropping all of the gems, honey, that you dropped this evening. And I just want to tell the audience, guys, you can find Tracy. Can you tell them where they can find you? Can you tell them about your new salon on Melrose as well? Oh, yes. Um, Legacy, my salon is called Legacy by Tracy Johnson. Um, it's on Melrose Avenue. Um, you can look me up on Instagram at Legacy by Tracy. Uh, it's spelled... Legacy is spelled L-E-G-A-C-C-I. 
And of course, I don't know if you guys know, but my name is spelled T R A C C I. Um, and then I also have a Instagram page, Tracy Johnson uh, W. And I'm on in and I'm on Facebook as well, Tracy Johnson Warren. So perfect. And guys, if you get a chance, you can head over to my website at Hey Lady by Tanya. That's with an I. dot com, and I need you guys to read Tracy's impressive resume. Please do that. Uh, all right, Tracy, well, let's go on and toast it out with your cucumber water. Girl, yes. <laughs> and, and look, and my long hairs. I love it. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It's so cute. And I want to say thank you so much, girl. Clink, clink. Thank you for having me. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. We'll see this you was great. What would you say? This was great. Thank, Thank you. you. No, it was. This was wonderful. Look, girl, I, and I always know it's good when I'm not trying to cut people off at the 30 mark. So the <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right? I the fact that we went beyond that. Yeah, this was some right. good stuff. I hope you guys oh, really? watch Did we go beyond it? Yeah, okay, we, we did. did. I hope you guys will watch this again and truly, truly collect all of the gems that Tracy dropped this evening. You know, that is what this platform is all about, is providing a resource for you women, for all of us together. You know, when women help women, we have so much that we can accomplish together, guys. And, you know, that is what this is all about. And everybody has a story. And Tracy, I do appreciate you sharing your story with us this evening. Thank right, you. Guys. All right, y'all. Right. We'll see y'all next week. Me and my hairs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl. See you later. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye.